you want to sound like jazz. That's the goal. You want to be able to take a song, solo over it, and then play stuff that sounds right with good phrasing and good timing. And one of the best places to get started with this is to start learning solos by ear. And I think you should start with Grant Green solos. His solos will teach you amazing bebop phrasing and vocabulary on the guitar. So actually playable, it's not something that's super difficult to figure out. Because if you're getting started learning solos by ear, don't start with mid 60s Coltrane. I'll show you some great jazz blues examples from Grant Green. Let's begin with a great jazz blues line from his solo on Solid, which is both my favorite Grant Green album and a great B-flat blues. I think I'm missing a grace note, actually. Uh, I'll add that later. So you can hear how strong the phrasing is and how he's just sitting so nicely in the groove. That's half of what this is. And the line is super simple, actually. It's just like B-flat major triad with maybe the six in there to so give, give us some of that major pentatonic sound. And then, of course, he's still adding a lot of phrasing. There are some different rhythms. He's using triplets, but he's also adding phrasing in terms of sliding into that third, which is, of course, an important part of getting the blues sound. Not using bends, but sliding, because that's more the thing in jazz. You can also hear the dynamics in the last part of it, where he's going down to... It's actually really soft. You almost don't hear it there. So there's a lot of dynamics within the lines also, which is really also part of what makes it exciting to listen to. He's not a robot just playing some notes like a MIDI ringtone. You can probably tell that this is far from impossible to learn and also a lot of fun to play. Now that's the blues side of things, but there's also some bebop stuff to check out. Here are some triplet arpeggios, pivot arpeggios, and also some trills. Check it out. I don't know why, but sort of that last phrase ending with a major seventh arpeggio, where he's going back and forth to the sixth, really reminds me of Peter Bernstein, but I can't really figure out why that is. Now this and the next example, I think really shows how Grant Green uses different sounds to keep the solo interesting. First, we get all this bebop. So we have like, like the triplet arpeggio with the F minor seven. Then there's a bit of phrasing sliding into the G, so. And here we get the beginning of an A-flat major 7 pivot arpeggio, something that he uses really a lot. And then continuing into another trill, so... And ending on that D-flat major 7 arpeggio on the E-flat 7, so... And this is exactly the type of line and the type of vocabulary building blocks that you want to have in your fingers and in your ears as a part of your playing. But to change things up, then Grand Green really shifts to another gear, going back to some of that blues phrasing. Notice that he's really just sticking to B-flat lines and he's not playing any material that's sort of based on the F7 chord that shows up in the song. And that's really just digging into that blues contrast, which is much bigger when you just played a bebop phrase that, like the previous example. And that, I think that's really also a huge part of what makes him such a great example. And all built around the B-flat major triad, really keeping it simple, sliding into some notes, so... Really getting that blues sound in that way, maybe using the fourth just to, to actually also get to the third. For the rest, just sticking with that beautiful B-flat major triad. Now, we also have my usual hot take on Grand Green, which is his tone not being that great on all of his albums. I think you'll hear what I mean in later examples. Now, with this album, which is one of the later albums, then I think he sounds quite different from some of the earlier albums that he played on. And that is also part of probably why I like this album so much. Of course, if you have Joe Henderson playing on an album, that's it's never gonna hurt. One of the greatest parts of the jazz blues sound is when you mix major and minor blues and get some of that blues sound, but also have some of the expensive extensions in there. And that's actually what's happening here in this really simple but strong example. Check out how he's using a short three or four note motif, but using that to connect the whole thing and turn it into more than just running the chords. Often when you're starting out playing jazz, then you only want to play lines spill out the changes and add chromatic notes and arpeggios. And of course, that is important. It's a part of the sound. But it's also good to remember that all the guys that we look up to also sometimes play something that is 
really simple. It is about balance. This example is from Cool Blues, another B-flat blues. And here you can also hear an example of a much thinner tone. Now, luckily, there's not as much spring reverb on it as he has on his Standards album, which I really am not a fan of. In these earlier recordings, like Cool Blues, he is, as far as I know, playing his ES-330, which has P90s. And there is this story from George Benson that he showed how he would set up his amp and that Grant Green told him that he was always turning down treble and bass completely and then turning up the mids. Now, I believe that was possible at that time because he was using a Fender Super Reverb, but I wonder if he could actually do that with the amps in this period. I think most of them just had treble and bass. Maybe he was just turning down the bass. The tone is, in any case, fairly thin if you compare it to how he sounds in the first examples in this, this video, which are from Solid. And I tend to prefer that sound. I think it also has a lot to do with him not using a guitar with P90s on it. Let me know what you think. I know it's kind of an unpopular opinion that I'm not a fan of his early tone. This next example is from the album Grandstand, which came out in 1961. And when I was checking out what year this was, because it sounded like it, it's an early album with that tone, I found something that was actually quite mind-blowing. Grand Green recorded eight albums as a leader in 1961. Pretty insane. And he was a sideman on 15 to 16 other albums, which is also pretty impressive. Check out how he started his solo with some real minor blues. So this is all pretty much box one B-flat minor blues. Again, it's a blues in B-flat. And he starts with just taking one note that's out of the position and then immediately back down to the root. So really keeping it simple, using a few slides at the end of the phrase. And he stays with this sound and has a very elegant transition into some solid bebop that I think is also an illustration of something that is often analyzed wrong when it comes to minor seven chords, especially when we're talking about lines from this period. <laughs> I think he's actually picking that uh, triplet. You can really hear that that's not that a hammer-on pull-off. I need to change that in the sheep music. So check out how he's really just sticking with the B-flat minor blues sound. And then just elegantly sliding into the B and then he's on G7, so. But he's not just playing the line. It's not, again, it's not like a robot. There's some phrasing in there, so. So he has this trill in there, and then the C minor seven line, I think really shines as a great bebop line. So it's actually pretty simple, but at the same time, because we have that large skip in there, and we also have the enclosure around the C, then there's really something happening. And often you'll hear people analyze this because there's no B flat and there's a B in there. They'll tell you, well, it's a C minor seven, but he's playing melodic minor. I don't think that's actually what, what really describes what's happening here because clearly, this is a part of a chromatic enclosure, so it's not maybe really a scale note. It's not like if you were playing melodic minor on this, that's a different sound. You can do, of course, you can do whatever you want and you can play melodic minor on a C minor seven and use that sound. But I think it takes more than just having one, one leading note in there. As soon as you start trying to describe what's happening in a lick or a melody with a scale, you're almost kind of missing the point because there's always more happening than just analyzing something and going, well, that's melodic minor. Let's check out some more great motivic stuff, especially where he's working with rhythm and maybe a lick that George Benson stole from him. George Benson plays this exact turnaround in his Billy's Bounce solo, right at the spot where the studio loses power and the tempo and the sound gets sort of all warbly. Now, I don't know what you think, but I think it's another gratitude to Grant Green. Check it out. So of course, it's super simple, so it could also be something else. Let me know in the comments if you think that Jaws is actually sort of paying tribute to Grand Green. This blues is from Grant's first stand, which is another of his albums recorded in 1961. The main reason I'm including this is actually this phrase. So there's a lot going on here. So he's mixing major and minor blues again, so we have the the high note, which is that D flat, but we also have the major six in there. So he kind of takes this as a motif and repeats it, but then makes it more interesting by making it more offbeat in the rhythm. 
adding a note here, and then it kind of becomes something else. So first, same pickup, but then he's sliding all the way up to the E flat. And from this, it kind of becomes a completely different thing. All on one string, but that kind of develops again. He and this is also just on one string. And the way Grand Green works with the rhythm and developing this motif is phenomenal. You can learn so much from playing these solos. Another solo that both defines great jazz blues and taught me a lot is the track Joe's Blues from the album Intercontinental by Joe Pass. Check it out. It is by far my favorite Joe Pass album to listen to. And that blues solo is incredible. <laughs> 